put them in your pocket, take them home. Isaiah chapter 28, stand with me if you would. Isaiah 28, verse 10, 11, and 12. Listen to this. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. I would like to take this text tonight, Old Testament prophecy, and deal with a subject, a Pentecostal subject. We're in a Pentecostal church, right? Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, I thank you for your presence today. I pray that every person in the building, including myself, would gain some fresh word of God that would help us in our understanding, that would help us in our faith, help us in our prayer and our worship. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us tonight and every believer in the house if there be anyone here that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that, Lord, through the demonstration of the power of God, they would know that Jesus is real and his love is real, that they would come to know him tonight. And, Lord, that every believer would leave here with a brand new, fresh touch of your spirit tonight that we may enter into that rest, that we may enter into that refreshing time in the presence of the Lord tonight. We'll be careful to praise you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. God bless you. The relationship I'm going to deal with tonight with the idea or the topic of speaking in other tongues. Uh, we, we are Pentecostal. I'm not preaching in a Baptist church tonight or a Methodist church or the Lutheran church or any other. I have preached in those before, and, uh, but I'm not in any of those churches tonight, but I'm in a Pentecostal church. And so I, I know that you'll, uh, uh, if not all, most of you will be right here with me uh, tonight. But listen to me. The, uh, this relationship, that we have with Almighty God. Isn't that amazing? We're in a relationship with Almighty God. We're in a relationship with Him, and that relationship is a spiritual one. It, it, is, not, uh, it is not, you know, something that we do in the flesh, though we, are, we have a body, we're walking around in flesh, how, what we do with this body matters to God, but we are not in a fleshly relationship with God, but it is a spiritual relationship with the Lord. We are at the place that Jesus was telling up to the, uh, the woman at the well. He said, there will come a day that the true worshipers would worship God in spirit and in truth. Spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of man and the spirit of God cooperating, fellowshipping, communion, communing with one another. This worship, we no longer bring sacrifices. We no longer have a legalistic view of salvation, but this relationship, this worship, this communion with God is a spiritual one. It's as if we are fellowshipping in a relationship with, uh, with someone who we can actually see, talk to, uh, touch or hold, but it is in a relationship with God. Though we have not seen him, though we have, you may have never heard his audible voice, we are in a spiritual relationship that is just as real, just as genuine than any other relationship 
in that you have in this life. And so we, we, we know this is a spiritual walk that we're in. We are to walk in the spirit we are to be led by the spirit we are to follow the uh, the uh, commands of god and this coincides with our spirituality but god's spirit has been given to equip us uh, the spirit of god has been given to uh, to empower us to live a life of victory upon this planet he gives us guidance this abiding spirit that we felt him as we worship God tonight. You may have felt him tangibly on out, on the outside, on your skin. Did you feel the presence of the Lord? But it's almost like we are, it is in that abiding presence with God, it is a companionship that we have with the Lord. This ab abiding presence that is constantly with us, not only with us but he is dwelling on the inside of us and uh, God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth and with the the believer that is seeking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and or with the spirit filled believer presently when we yield ourselves to the unction of the spirit and we speak in other tongues he gives the this utterance that he gives is a special gift that is so vitally important to our day-to-day -day life and living for the Lord, whether it's in our private prayer time with the Lord and we pray. The Bible speaks of that as praying in the Holy Ghost, right? Our prayer, no one else is there to listen, but it's just you and God communing and he is praying a prayer through you as you yield uh, and speak the utterance in which he is giving the Christian. And so whether it's private prayer whether it is uh, it, it takes place as we are uh, as we are worshiping the Lord corporately, whether it's the gifts of the Spirit as we are aware of tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophesying, and and so on. Uh, we we are speaking. He is speaking through us when he speaks in tongues. Let's look at our texts again. You say, uh, Pastor, it's kind of odd, isn't it, that you're dealing with the idea of speaking in tongues and you start out in the Old Testament. Well, I believe this is a prophecy concerning an individual and a people, but it's also for you and I. For with the stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing Right, and so what is the rest? What is the refreshing? There, and this is the this is the encouragement tonight, if you will. It is so important for us that we, as we worship, as we pray corporately or all alone, as we get into the Spirit of God, and we do it on a normal basis, whether it's privately or in a church setting like it is tonight. It's important that we press through to a renewing of the spirit, speaking in other tongues in the life of a Pentecostal believer. It's so important that it ought to be a normal, regular occurrence in your life. Amen. It should happen all the time. You have, you should have such prayer times, right? I mean, you don't walk around speaking in tongues all day, every day of your life. But in your moments, your special moments in prayer, uh, prayer, prayer time alone, there should be times when you pray through, right? You pray to the point where the Spirit of God gets involved in your prayer. There are times when we come in to worship. It's not that you're trying to make a scene, but you that you can't help it. There will be times when you speak in other tongues. The Spirit of God will overwhelm you, and it happens, you know, and so on and so forth. It should be a normal and regular thing uh, to happen. And so uh, we, we that rest that it's talking about there is sometimes the doctor may recommend that you have some rest. Ever heard that before? 
Sister Shirley said right like she's heard that from somewhere before. Sometimes when our body needs healing, the doctor will say, you need to get some rest. Now, most of us don't like that because most of us cannot stand to do nothing. 90% of the time, that's how I feel. But I do not have a problem when I have time to take a nap. Come on, somebody. Right? And so, but it's something about that. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, but there, there is something about when your body physically uh, has some time to do nothing, right, to get some rest, there is a, there's a benefit that comes by that because the natural healing physically that God has made our bodies, when we rest sometimes, it allows that function that God has made it to be to bring healing to our bones or muscles or whatever may the case be. Amen. And, and, but it's the same thing in the spirit. When we have a prayer meeting or a church service or you're just all alone by yourself at your house and you just have a time where the spirit of God is pouring in you and he begins to flow out of you, it's like giving you rest like we rest physically. There is a rest that comes upon you in the spirit, right? Everything in this life can be crazy. You may have some bad things going on in your life, some difficult things that you're having a hard time dealing with. But when you get lost in the presence of God and the Holy Ghost begins to move in you and flow through you, it's like those things didn't disappear. But God pours the rest of God in in our lives, we need the moving of the Spirit in our lives on a daily basis. Come on, give him praise tonight. We need that. You say, this is the emphasis, right? This is the emphasis of why, you know, we call it praying through. You pray until the Holy Spirit shows up. We worship God until the Holy Spirit shows up, right? Because there is some type of uh, a spiritual medication that's taking place as the Spirit of God pours in and flows out. of. This is the way that God has made it. We are made of body, soul, and spirit. And that spirit man needs his medicine. And he, the Spirit of God is what he possibly he needs, right? And so whether we're praying, whether we're singing, right? You can sing in the spirit. Paul said, I sing in the spirit, sing with understanding. We when we pray in the spirit, however that is, uh, there it is God that's doing the speaking. Right? You don't know what's being said. You just know God's moving in your heart and in your life. You don't know what's being said. But, I mean, some of the most powerful things in this world are words, and you cannot get any more powerful than when God is the one doing the speaking and you're doing the yielding, right? Words are powerful. Perhaps, I mean, some amazing words were spoken on the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy, Go Holy Ghost came and filled the believers, about 120 of them. They ushered in a brand new age, a kingdom, right? New power of the church and uh, that initial reaction that initial evidence the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is speaking with other tongues and so they were there in one place one accord and all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and they began began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Can I give you something just to think on, to meditate on? And it's it, it, if I'm wrong, it doesn't really matter uh, in the in the whole picture of things. Uh, I know some we see artist depictions, and and sometimes we we uh, say or it's that there were actually little uh, balls of fire that hovered over the heads of those believers. 
possibly it did, right? But when I, this is my version of it, I believe that it says cloven tongues like as a fire. I, like as a fire. I, mean, I believe it was something like this. The auction in which the Holy Ghost came into that building and as they began to speak with other tongues, it was like the force of fire that was burning in them and doing a work. Why? Because there is also the sanctifying power, the purging, the, 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 the holiness of God is the fire of God. And when that fire begins to burn in us, it's burning out everything that doesn't need to be in that life. He's making us holy. He is purging us. He is cleansing us. That's why sometimes you feel so good. When the Holy Spirit flows through your life because of that fire of God. That's just my two cents worth. If I'm wrong, when I get to heaven, make sure you find me on Holiness Highway and we'll talk about it. Words became so important to the kingdom of God. Look, verse 6, it tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse 6 tells us that the people, they were bewildered. What is going on and, and, and what was God doing? And uh, verse 7 tells us that they were amazed at what they were seeing and what they were hearing. These are the devout Jews that were witnessing all that was going on in the upper room and around the upper room. They asked the question in verse 12, what does this mean? And verse 16, Peter says, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. There was a prophecy, Old Testament prophet, the prophet Joel. He said, there is coming a day in the last days that God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. This was the prophecy there. And, the, and the, uh, the day of Pentecost was the beginning of the prophecy that we just mentioned from the prophet Joel. That was the beginning. Of, but when did the prophecy stop? Anybody? It's not a trick question. It hasn't. We're still living in the last days. The beginning of the last days was marked when the Holy Spirit was poured out, but the mankind has been living in the last days ever since that outpouring, and he has been pouring out his Spirit not just at the beginning. It never stopped. There's some people in this world that think that it stopped. There's some people in the world that believe, well, the, the Holy Ghost baptism and speaking in other tongues and the gifts of the spirit you know that all died out with the apostles it may have died out in their church but you've brought me too far too long to tell me uh, that the gifts of the spirit the power of the holy ghost uh, speaking in other tongues uh, died out many years ago now the prophecy is still being fulfilled today presently in 2022 Amen. It's a gift, not only for the individual, but for the church. The best way to describe it is an expression of the innermost being that God is moving, turning within us and we have this spirit that in his fullness and God gives us the utterances as we obey and speak to them. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, listen to me now very closely everybody, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and every other work of, of the Holy Spirit is a cooperation between God and and man. The Holy Spirit does not move on his own, right? I'm not saying he could not. I'm saying he does not. Amen. The word teaches us. It is a co cooperation. God has chosen to dwell in mankind by his spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know why he's chosen that, but that's the way that he moves. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit comes to give power. He comes to give anointing. He comes to do the work in a building, in a family, in a church that needs to be done 
but he desires and needs vessels to fill and to flow through so the work of God can be done. We can't leave it up to him. We say, he's God, he'll do whatever he wants to. But God's way is this. I want you to be my vessel. I'm going to flow through you. I'm going to anoint your testimony. I'm going to make you like Jesus. I'm going to change the way you talk. I'm going to change the way you, you walk. I'm going to change the way so people will know and sense the power of God that Jesus Christ is still alive today and always will be. See, there are reasons that you ought to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. It should be a common thing. I remember uh, growing up in church, uh, I had other pastors when I was very young, but when I began to get make sense out of things and serve the Lord, uh, my pastor, uh, he would eventually become my uh, father-in-law, amen, and uh, he talked about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I mean, I'm telling you, that was the that was the message. That was the that was the key to everything. Right? You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I am who I am today because I've had men like him and others emphasizing the power of the Holy Spirit. There are reasons. See, we we must have him. God teaches the Word of God teaches that when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. There is a cooperation. Now listen, you can't teach somebody how to speak in tongues. You can't, we're not going to even ever try to do that. Amen. Uh, there are people that try to take them to a back room and tell them, you know, uh, just repeat after me. Say it as fast as you can. Uh, I tie my tie, you tie. Oh, oh, that's it. Amen. You're, that ain't how it works. That's not how it works. But when you are seeking for the best, you got to know that you want him and you desire this gift from heaven and you have to ask him for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you have to believe for it and when you begin to pray and the Holy Ghost baptizer takes you by the hand and you begin to sense his presence it's like the Holy Spirit begins to turn in your heart and in your mind and he will give you the utterance and when you yield yourself to, to speak what you hear amen that very, it's almost instantaneous when you take that step of faith the tongues will come in when the Holy Ghost comes in, amen, it's like your shoes. You didn't have to pay extra for the tongues of your shoes, did you? You bought the shoes, the tongues came with it, thank God, amen. Right, the Holy Spirit will come. Seek the Lord, seek the Lord. The Bible says, "He blessed is he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness he shall be filled. He shall be satisfied. Amen. As we've seen speaking in tongues is the initial evidence or the sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, let me move on. I've got three hours of preaching to do in five minutes or whatever I've got left. Paul uh, writing to the Corinthian church, he encouraged speaking in tongues in their worship of God. He also encouraged them to speak in tongues in their individual prayer when they're praying all along or whenever they're praying and, uh, and in order for spiritual edification. What does that mean? Spiritual building up. When you pray in the spirit, when you speak in other tongues as the spirit gives the utterance, there is something going on in your spirit, man, and he's building you up. Amen. He's strengthening you. You're building up your most holy faith when you pray in the spirit. That's why it's important. The day in which we live in, we need spiritual strength. We need the power of God, not just for a church service, but to live and to walk and to be who God has called us to be. We need the power from on high, amen, to help us be something that we cannot be on our own, you see. Jude said, but, but beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is not just the initial evidence, but, but it should be a common occurrence like I was saying earlier. Why? Because this gift from God Helps us worship him. 
Not just in prayer. Oh, we need to pray in the spirit. We need to pray through every day. I about said that earlier. That was something that Brother Browning used to say all the time. You need to pray through every day. I used to think, my goodness, how is that possible? Every day? And I found out when you take your prayer time serious, when you worship God, you'll not only pray in the spirit in the morning, but when you get on in your car and you get a good worship song and the Holy Ghost comes into that car, you'll just, you might just start speaking in tongues right there. Hey Amen. I've spoken in tongues in Walmart before. I wasn't making a spectacle. Probably nobody even heard me. I'm just walking in through there, and I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. I don't know. I can't remember why. Something good had just happened, and I just began to pray and speaking in tongues. I felt like I was running into the devil before, and I began to pray, and the Holy Ghost came on the scene and started helping me. It should be a common occurrence, right, when we're praying in the Spirit. And if that's a practice, and you you allow yourself around the altars, when in your seats as we worship at your house, continually all the time worshiping and praying to God in the spirit you won't have to wait for youth camp you won't have to wait for camp meeting you won't have to wait for the next evangelist or even the next service at Good Shepherd you can have him on sight all the time continually in your life and we desperately need him amen sometimes you know I'm sure you it doesn't make us perfect you may know someone that is full of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes they get a, they get a bad attitude. Or just, you know, something happens, they say things they shouldn't say, right? Sometimes that is the outcome of not praying and seeking the Lord like they need to every day of their life. But he wants to dwell in us. Right, he wants to dwell in us. It is a cooperation, not just the praying in the spirit, but everything we do in God, living for him. It is a cooperation in serving the Lord. We pray in the spirit because he makes intercession for us. The Holy Spirit does nothing of himself, neither does he do anything for himself. The Holy Spirit's mission, it's important to know this because this help us, helps us to know what he's doing with all of these things that we've talked about. His mission is to glorify Christ. His mission is to reveal Jesus, not just to make you feel good. Right? We feel good because he's making us more like him. We feel renewed because he's making us like him. He's dealing with us, convicting us, changing us, molding us, and making us, guiding us into all truth. And so this feels good, but it's because he is making us more like Jesus. He comes to glorify Christ. He comes to do the work of Christ. He could not even be given until after Jesus was glorified and in experience there can't, they can't be a Pentecost before we go to Calvary. And so when Jesus rose from the dead, he ascended back to heaven. He was the victor. He is the king of all and the Holy Ghost is his gift to you and I. And we have fellowship with the Holy Ghost because of our experience in Christ. It's all about about Jesus it's all about Jesus the Bible says if we live after the flesh we die if we are led by the spirit walk not after the flesh but after the spirit then the spirit dwells in us lives through us and works by us then comes this listen to this in Romans chapter 8 26 and 27 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infir infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Prayer is powerful, but prayer that is being given by God himself is the best kind. Because it's always concerning the will of God. How many times in your life have you been in prayer about something and you just didn't know exactly what you should be asking for? I think maybe this comes along more with age. Because when you're young, you think you know everything. 
right? When you were younger, didn't you think, I'm just sitting out, I mean, I remember I'd lay under pews sometime and pray, and I mean, I'm just, I'm letting it rip. I'm just telling all about it, you know, and telling God. But the older I've got, the more I've slowed down some and listened as much as I speak because I realize what he has to say is much more important than what I've got to say. And so to realize, man, I've, I've, or maybe the older you get, the, your needs or life gets a little more complicated. And there's sometimes you're praying about something and you don't really know what you need to be asking for. Maybe it's not plain in the Bible what you, you know, what uh, concerning a particular situation and, you, and you're praying like, Lord, uh, I, I don't really know how I should be praying about this. Because this is this, and you know that if that happens, or this over here, and what's best? I don't know the future. I don't know most of the past. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. I just, but you do, and and we realize we don't know. That probably some of the truest statements that's ever been uttered by a man. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say about this situation. I don't even know what to ask. I don't really know what the core of the need really is. You know, I know how what I would like to see happen, or I know what I want to see done uh, uh, but God you know best and so all of a sudden we get lost in God and we begin to pray and the Holy Spirit gets involved in our prayer we begin to pray in the spirit when that begins to happen church uh, I would encourage you don't stifle that but stay in that realm of the spirit as long as you possibly can because every word that is being uttered by your tongue you don't understand it but it is God himself praying through your situation and things are being unlocked and things are being broken and walls are coming down and chains are being broken for the glory of God. Because when God prays, when God speaks, he come on shata masanda. When he pre when he speaks, when he preaches, hallelujah, amen, there is no more powerful words ever uttered when God speaks, because what did Genesis 1 say? When he spoke, let there be light, and there was light. That is the word of God. Amen. Am I done? I have no idea. God knows the mind of the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit, instructed by him, inspired by his influence, the unction of the Spirit. Amen. And, uh, and this is the New Testament. What is talking about prayer? You want prayer that prevails. If you want prayer, the Bible says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That kind of prayer is at its deepest and greatest when we are praying in the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. I don't I think I'm done. I'm not sure. I'm not at the end of my notes, but I think the point was made tonight. We need the Spirit of God. If you're here tonight and you you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. You need to be baptized this, this, is a, this is the number one thing on your agenda as a believer I know there's some under the sound of my voice you have not had this experience in God the greatest instruction I could give to you is seek the Lord with all of your heart until don't just pray tonight right and but if he doesn't feel you tonight, you don't have to wait until the next time somebody preaches on the subject. When you go to bed tonight, when you wake up in the morning, your whole life from this point forward in this moment is seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost until he pour you say, Pastor, I I've been seeking for the Lord, you know, and uh, it just hasn't happened yet. I, someone, a, a good friend of mine was telling me the story of um, this man uh, or, or it may have been a woman, uh, praying in the altar. And uh, she was praying and praying and praying. And the minister of that, uh, that night uh, got down there and uh, was trying to help her or him and give them some instruction 
or whatever, and the, the person looked up at him and said, I've been seeking for the Holy Ghost for 22 years. I know what I'm doing. This, gift, this baptism of the Spirit is a gift for you. You don't even have to know or understand all of what I've just said. He's God. It's not some mystical force to be afraid of. He's God. God the Father, Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He's God. They're all three. They're one. It's not anything spooky. It's not anything you should be afraid of. This same God that wants to flow in your life and fill you is the same one that loved you so much that he gave his only son to die for you. He paid for your sins even though when you didn't realize it, before you even asked him, before you were even born, he was making a way that you could be saved. He cares for you. He loves you. It's just he's God. He's God. He is a gift. And if you have stopped short of receiving this gift in the fullness of God, then you are living beneath your privilege as a child of God. You could have one of the greatest gifts ever given, but when you stop short of that, well, you're just stopping short. You begin to pray. I remember I was, I was raised in church and been in, I had been in church like a lot of people have. A lot of the people here, maybe young people that are still seeking for the baptism. I was raised in church. I, I, I had been around it all my own life. I understood some things and a lot of things I didn't understand. When I got saved in the last part of 1998, that emphasis was there. And I, after I got saved, I started seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there were times when I would, can I just share my experience? I'm not trying to teach you anything. or any, I'm just trying to, maybe you're in my, you, maybe you're wearing the same shoes I was wearing back then. I, I would feel the presence of God and I had all these ideas and I was so confused. The last thing I wanted to do was do something that was wrong or I didn't want to offend God. I, I didn't want to blaspheme the Holy. I mean, all, all this stuff was going through my mind and I would begin to pray and all these people around me praying like we do and, and they, they were saying that the same things. Come on, Graham, let go. Just let go. Somebody else was saying, come on, hold on. Let go, hold on. I knew it. They were, I wasn't confused. I knew what they were talking about. I knew, all, and I would feel the presence of God, and I would even begin to have stammering lips. But I was so afraid of uttering something that wasn't of God. Listen to me. If that's where you are, I promise you, if you love Jesus and your heart is sincere and you're doing your best just to receive from the Lord, you're not going to do anything that's going to offend Him when your motives are pure. So when you begin to feel the Holy Ghost, and I've seen some of you cry, and I've seen some of you tremble, I've seen some of you have stammering lips, just let go and speak what God is in, putting in your spiritual ear. He never removes the element of faith. You got, and it's, I mean instantaneously, as soon as you step out in faith, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. He comes. When you're in Christ and you love God with all of your heart and you've repented from all, all known sin, you're ready. Just let go and let God have his way in your life. Let's pray. Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Just praise the Lord with me for a minute. I feel the Holy Ghost here on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to pray with me right here. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Begin to praise Him. Begin to pray.